I figured I'd try another, uh, standing narration. I don't know, I just don't really feel like sitting this morning, I guess. Anyways, uh, I'm bringing you the second, uh, Blame Truth one that I had probably... It's kind of an old match, to be honest, but, you know, I kind of had to space them apart because I really didn't want to upload them at the same time. Um, we decided on the standard. You guys already saw the outcome of that one, and I'll go ahead and show you, uh, this one as well. So let's go ahead and play it back right now. Uh, what do we have here? Okay, so we just got the intro screen. As you can see, uh, we're both using a couple uh, NFEs here, but that's half the fun of Enyu. So he leads with his uh, his pincer here, and then I go ahead and lead with my giraffe rig, which is really just a, a gimmick thing. You'll see later, but I know he's going to want to set up rocks with pincer right off the bat, so I go ahead and bring in my Charizard to scare it off and to, you know, to dodge the rocks that he's going to try to set up. So he goes into his Magmortar, uh, I had the feeling it was going to be Choice Scarf, but I really wanted to confirm, because I don't want to take Rock's damage and then come in again, because I can only do it three times, and granted, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a safe, completely safe switch versus a player of his caliber. So I stay in, I surprisingly live the Thunderbolt, which really shocked me. I'm sorry, that was a really bad pun now that I think about it, but like I said, I did live with 8, so that was probably absolute minimum damage, to say the least. And uh, it's a double down, so I go ahead and bring in my Armaldo. I can't really think of anything else good to bring in at this point. And uh, he brings in his Pinsert. Now, being scared of the Stone Edge, he's going to go ahead and switch out to something that can take a Stone Edge, which in this case is his, uh, his Dust Collapse. I go for the rock polish on the switch, not knowing, you know, he had a dust collapse or anything of the sort. I guess I wanted to scout out what else he had. I missed the stone edge, which is kind of big in my book, uh, despite the fact that it does have rest. You know, it does have the high crit ratio, so it could have helped. But I got burned now, and all he's really going to do at this point, he's going to stall me out of life orb. And, uh, well, with life orb, with burn, and with the seismic toss, I think I should be, uh, dead either okay no it's probably at the end of the next turn but yeah it does suck that i wasted armaldo like that i should have switched out fearing the will-o-wisp i get i didn't know this uh dust club set not all dust clubs carry will-o-wisps i guess i'm too used to uh seeing my own but he does get the rest so he gets all that health back that you know i did to him so there's not much i can do about it um, I send in Lapras, take my rocks damage, but fortunately because, you know, I'm kind of bulky, I still have a decent amount of health to sit on. And he goes into his Quagsire, expecting me to go for Surf, but I just go for the Ice, ice Beam, which is also Stab. Uh, which is actually, uh, a decent move in my book, because I do, pe I do Peck Surf, but Quagsire, I think, does have Water Absorb. I get the crit, but you're gonna see later that it doesn't matter at all. So... Uh, what happens here? So lefties happens, and then he decides he's gonna get out, and he's gonna go to some, his next best thing. Excuse me, next best thing to take the hit, which in this case would be would be his uh, Gardevoir. Uh, takes the ice beam like a champ, I guess. And we're just waiting on lefties. I don't know why I didn't speed this match up more to be off, to be honest. But uh, here's for the useless T wave. I had a feeling he might have gone for some kind of status or something of the sort. So I go for the status as well. I go for the toxic because I know this thing's going to be a bitch to take out. Uh, me being T-waved, I don't really mind it too much, I guess, because I'm not really expecting to outspeed anything in the first place. I'm kind of here to, you know, be a Lapras and then just be a tank. And the residual damage on that thing helps. But he packs something that I don't see on Gardevoir at all, and he packs the Encore. So I'm not going to stay in and toxic this thing all day. I have to switch out. At least I think that's what I do. I don't know, it'd be kind of stupid of me to stay in. But he switches out and he goes to his Vile Plume just in case I do want to stay in and decide to keep whittling away on Toxics. And uh, I just got to this Giraffe Rig. Now this Giraffe Rig is more or less a one-trick pony and you're going to see here. He does switch out. Um, I'm... I guess to take the Psychic, but I go for the Magic Coat. Now that's the Bounce Back the Sleep Powder that comes on the way. That's, lied, that's why I led with it, because it's good against Jump Luffs. I actually did uh, get a Jump Luff with it earlier that week that I did that match, but as you can see, my 
I don't know, my gimmick to my set, I guess, is kind of ruined, because I'm only packing three other moves that aren't really going to help me in this match until uh, Gardevoir is gone, and that's not really going to happen anytime soon. Now, I know he was going to go for the T-Wave or the Taunt of some sort, so I just went back into uh, Lapras to take whatever he wanted, and now that I'm not locked into Toxic anymore, I can go for my moves. Unfortunately, I do get the pair hacks, which probably would have mattered with uh, toxic damage as well. And as long as I could have gotten that hit in at the end of the turn. See, two surfs probably would have brought him down to the point where he could have been killed by uh, toxic damage. But you see, he does switch out here, so it's not like it really mattered. But I guess just hypothetically speaking, it probably could have taken him out. Um, I go for the Ice Beam, fearing the Quagsire switch in once again. Ice Beam is, I think, somewhere around the same amount of power anyway, so I'm not really... Excuse me, I'm not really too concerned. But uh, he does pass the wish successfully-ish. You know, he takes a little bit of health, but hey, that's expected. Now, I know he's going to go for the close combat because it's pincer and because it's close combat. And because I'm ice type and because, yeah. So I go to Metacham. Uh, despite my shitty defenses, I take it okay from Metacham, I guess. And I knew he was going to uh, switch out. But I didn't know what move to go for, so I just went for the uh, I just went for the stab psycho cut, and I actually get a crit right here. Um, my last match with him was rather hacksy, so he was like, "Oh come on," and I was like, "Well, you know, I don't really feel as bad about this one because psycho cut does have a high crit ratio, and because he switched out immediately after the uh, the rest there, uh, he didn't get the full amount of turns." to try and wake up, but since he does have Rest, Sleep Talk, Seismic Toss, and will o -Wisp, he pulls the Seismic Toss instead of the will o -Wisp, so I'm actually able to take it out rather easily, I guess. Uh, that, that crit did help, so. I stay in, and I do see the Gardevoir, but I decide to stay in because Psycho Cut, and because Gardevoir has a somewhat low base defense, but he does kill me with the Shadow Ball. Uh, the toxic damage will stack on him, eventually. I don't know, I kind of forgot what happens in this match, to be completely honest. All, all I know is its moveset is uh, Encore, T-Wave, Shadow Ball, probably got some other things in the mix. And uh, so I just come, I come in with Dragonair and I go for the extreme speed, uh, just because I don't know what EVT has invested in speed. Uh, he could still be faster, and I think it... Yeah, as you can see, Extreme Speed was enough to take it out despite me just having leftovers. And now here is where I'm kind of scared of the Sleep Powder, so I switch out, and this cost me the game. I'm going to be quite literal when I say that this cost me the game. Because he told me on Skype that he was looking the whole time, that his entire team pretty much played support to take out counters, and to, you know, get this thing in, in a good position where it can get the sunny day set up, and it can literally just you know, pretty much kill everything in its sight. Uh, so I'm not going to take a stab solar beam at all because Vileplume has actually uh, actually pretty good stats in everything except for speed and has a shallow move pool so that's why it would be considered NU. But its stab in the sun is a very powerful stab and uh, next to nothing is gonna, you know, gonna be able to survive it. So. I go into Giraffe Ray just to take the Solar Beam. Kind of expected maybe to take it, but then I remembered that it's Stab, the base 120 move. The crit, uh, in my honest opinion, didn't matter. It could have, but at this point I just kind of expect to get swept anyway. Now, uh, right here, I don't know. I forgot that they get Sludge Bomb despite them being uh, Grass Poison. I was like, alright, maybe I can live a Solar Beam. And then he just bombs me, and I'm like, well, shit. So I got swept by a Vileplume, but uh, he did get his uh, revenge, I would say, for the uh, the last match. And I did get, you know, I did get some hacks in this match, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, probably going to narrate two or three more today, just to have ready for next week. I'm not going to have a battle every day like I was. I'm going to go back to more or less my regular uploading schedule. Might do, like, some in-between things, but for the most part from now on. Just know that you're going to get videos Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But, uh, yeah, stay tuned, I guess.